If you've ever wanted to create a web app using R, then Shiny is definitely the way to go. Of course, Shiny is a huge topic, so in today's video, I'll show you how Shiny works in a nutshell. So let's dive in. The first thing that we have to understand is the anatomy of a Shiny app. Basically, a Shiny app consists out of three components. First, there's the user interface. This is sort of the face of the operation. And the second part, that's the server component. This is the brains behind the operation. So basically, you can think of the first part, the user interface, as the stuff that lures your user in, like with a flashy, good looking user interface. This is the thing that people will interact with. And in the background, the stuff that people won't see is the server that executes our code as needed. That's basically how you can think of a Shiny app. And I've said that there are three components. The third component is the Shiny app function that ties the server and the UI together. Inside an R script, you can throw in a really simple Shiny app by first calling the Shiny package, then creating the user interface, which is just the fluid page call. We'll look into what this does in a second. And then you have the server variable, which is just the function that can execute R code based on the things that are needed inside of the app. Don't worry about these function arguments here, just know that a Shiny app has these three arguments. And then the third part is this Shiny app function that ties these two variables together so that if we execute all of this, we see that right now we don't get any output, but that's because I'm on Positron. On Positron, whenever you source a whole script like I did now, you have to print it to see it in the viewer. And now you see that, well, this is a majestic Shiny app that does exactly nothing. That's okay, so let's fill our user interface with actual content. Let's have a look at our console here and then let's see what the UI is. You see here now that the UI is just some text that corresponds to HTML code. Technically in there it can be HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but let's ignore the technicalities for now. The point of Shiny is that we don't have to worry about it. I just want to untangle the mystery of what this UI variable is. It's just some fancy looking code that will generate the outputs like we want. So if we want to fill our user interface with input elements, then we just have to use the functions that Shiny gives us to do exactly that. You see, for all kinds of inputs, there is an input function. For example, if you want to create a slider, there's a slider input function. If you want to create a drop down menu, there's a select input function. So basically for everything you might want to do, there is an input function and they all work kind of the same. In the first argument of an input function, you will always have to specify an ID of your input. This is something that needs to be unique, just like any ID should be unique. And in the second argument of that function, what you need is a title for your input. This could be some generic title or some call to action. And then the third, fourth, fifth, and so on argument, all of these arguments are input specific. For example, we can use the slider input function to fill our user interface with a slider input. You know, these things where you drag a handle and then the selected number is changed. In Shiny, all inputs start with an ID that you have to specify. Here, let's just call this ID my slider. And then we need a title for this input, which in this case will just be a call to action that says select your number. And then in all Shiny, inputs. This is the part where things go different depending on the input. The first two arguments are the same, but then after this, the third, fourth, and so on argument of that specific input function is input specific. It doesn't make sense to use the same specification for a drop-down menu and for a slider input. So this is why in our case here, we can specify for the slider input, the minimum value that can be selected is zero, the maximum is one. We start with a value of 0.5 and we can use increments of 0.1. So all of this specifies our slider input and if we just look at this here we see that this is just more html code and if we were to look at the ui currently then we'd see that our previous ui code is just getting longer because now there's more html code inside of it now if i want to have a look at how this actually looks i could use the ui variable and throw this to the html tools package and stick this into the browsable function and then you'd see that here i'd get my current ui this doesn't look 
like a slider, but the reason why this doesn't look like a slider yet is because the shiny app function will also throw in a whole bunch of style elements that will turn this thing into a slider. So bear with me here. Currently it doesn't look like a slider, but it will, I promise. And if you don't want to use this browsable function, instead what I recommend anyway is to use the bslib package and use the page fluid function from there. Its purpose is the exact same as the previous page fluid function, but it's a modern interpretation of it and using bslib will make your app look immediately more modern, fresher, cooler, whatever you want to call it. It will make things look good. So this is why I recommend always starting with the page fluid from bslib. And now if you execute this and take a look at the UI, this immediately produces the output inside of the viewer. Now enough about the viewer, let's throw in another input. Let's stick in a drop down menu, which we can do using the select input function, where we first specify the ID of this particular input. In this case, we call it my drop down menu. We throw in a label, which in this case is another call to action. And then we throw in input specific stuff. In this case, we just need to specify the choices. And that way, if we execute this and have a look at our UI now, we see that we have a drop down menu inside of here. Clearly, you don't only want to have inputs, you also need to generate some outputs. And you can create those using the specific output functions. So if you want to have a text output, you'll use the text output function. If you want to have a plot output, you'll use the plot output function. I think you get the idea of how this works out. The important thing to remember is that all of these output functions they only create like a placeholder where you can technically store the plots, the text or whatever it is that you want to put into user interface, the place where you can store these things in. In our case, I just want to do something simple. So that's why I'll use the text output function where I just have to specify an output ID. In my case, I'll just call it my generated text. And now if I render this and have a look at this, we see now that, okay, nothing really changed because this code here created only a placeholder that our server function has to fill later. Remember, the UI is only the face of the operation and the server is the brains behind the operation. So that's why the server server actually needs to do stuff to produce outputs. And before I show you how to do this magic on the server function, let me mention that Shiny is something that brings you into the world of web development. So this is a huge topic and I cannot possibly cover everything. But thankfully I have friends that have spent a lot of time on Shiny and figuring out what's the best way to help people learn this. And that's why I can recommend the courses from Athletics by Verla, who has created a bunch of Shiny courses that will teach you everything you need to know about Shiny. And with my affiliate code RAP10, you can get 10% off all their data science courses. If you want to use this, check out the link in the description of this video. And now let me show you how to work the magic on the server function. To actually generate outputs for these placeholders is where the server function comes in. This is where you can use inputs and some other R code to generate something for the output placeholders. And in the terminology of Shiny, this means that we render the outputs. And to render the output, there is always a render function for each output. For text output, there's a render text. For plot output, there's a render plot, and so on. You can see there's always like a similar terminology to get the job done. And so that you understand how this render function works, let me show you how that's done. What we need to do here is to modify the output list of this server function by just using the output and then with the dollar sign accessing the ID that we specified. And then we assign to this a render function that can render the text output. You see, for every output function like the text output, there is a corresponding render function that does the corresponding calculations on the server function to get the output. So this is why for text output, there is the render text function. You can see here there are a bunch more, but here we're using the one that corresponds to our current output, namely the render text. And into this function, you can throw in all the R code that you want, as long as it at the end returns the thing that you want to stick into the output. So what we can do here and what we usually do is to first throw these parentheses here so that we can use multiple lines of R code and then we can do whatever we want in here. Maybe make sure 
sure that it's valid R code, not like this crap here, but in principle, you can do a whole lot of R goodness inside of these curly brackets. I don't want to do anything too fancy in here, so let's just stick the inputs together. So basically, I want to stick together the thing from the slider input and the thing from the drop down input. To concatenate text, what I need is the paste function. So I'll use the paste function in here, and then I need to grab the inputs with the specific IDs. And if you've paid attention, then you might think, okay, wait a second. Here we have the outputs and we are assigning something to the output using output dollar sign. And now we want to grab inputs and we have input here. So you might think that, yeah, yeah, I think you're on the right track. You actually want to access the input using the dollar sign again and then just throwing in the ID that you want. But here, what we can do is to grab the my dropdown input and you can also grab the my slider input, which is the other ID that we've specified. So now if you execute this, you see now that first, because I've executed everything here, including this shiny app function, we see here now that this actually became a slider. Also, you see that my dropdown menu looks nicer now, and we also see the output here. And now if I change the slider, you see that the number in the text output updates, and the same thing is true for this dropdown menu. Nice. With that, we have covered how shiny works in a nutshell. You have understand how the user interface and the server function interact together to create an interactive experience for the user. And fundamentally, this is what Shiny does. But of course, there's way more stuff that you can learn about this, and we'll cover a lot of stuff in the next couple of videos. But of course, don't forget that you can also check out the full-fledged Shiny courses from Athletics. Don't forget that you can use my affiliate codes. You can find all of that stuff in the description. And now all that's left to say is thank you for watching and I will see you next time.